An LFO, or low frequency oscillator, can be used to automatically modulate an effect, such as the low pass filter that we made in a previous video. This schematic includes, at the top left, an oscillator with sync, which we've built in previous videos. Following the output of the oscillator is a cutoff knob for our low pass filter. Along the top route, we meet the capacitor for our low pass filter. Back of the cutoff knob, we've added a switch that also leads to a light dependent resistor, LDR for short the basis of our Vactral based LFO. The other essential part of a Vactral is a light source, in this case an LED, that can fluctuate to modulate the resistance of the light dependent resistor. In this configuration, it is replacing the cutoff potentiometer for the LDR when the switch is thrown. The LED's brightness is modulated by another of the same oscillator circuit we've built before at the bottom middle of the schematic. While a 4106 chip's output is binary, either on or off, the capacitor in the circuit is constantly charging and discharging its voltage in a triangle wave. The voltage of the triangle wave is sent to an op amp as a buffer, as the load of the LED would affect the circuit's behavior. Op amps are glorious little things, and one of their uses is as a buffer that can isolate parts of a circuit. We've made a voltage follower that essentially monitors the voltage at the capacitor and copies it to send to the LED without affecting the oscillator's behavior. We've utilized another op amp at the output of our circuit to buffer it before plugging it into something. Let's walk through how to breadboard it. Let's take the output of our oscillator and jump it over to a cleaner part of the breadboard. Connect the middle leg of the potentiometer to the output and the right leg to its own rail. The middle terminal of the switch goes to the right leg of the potentiometer. Each other terminal gets its own rail. Add one leg of the light dependent resistor to one rail. Adding in the capacitor for a filter to the other leg. And the remaining leg of the capacitor to ground. Next, we'll jump the junction of the LDR and capacitor down to the non-inverting input of our op amp. We also need to ground the op amp and supply it with power. Add a small jumper from the inverting input to the output of the op amp. This is the basic setup for a buffer or voltage follower. We'll send this buffered output to our volume control circuit. Right now we've set up a basic passive low pass filter with a buffered output. Let's see how it sounds. If we throw the switch, we can see how the LDR reacts when we put our finger over it. You can still use the cutoff knob to alter the sound. Now let's build our LFO by using a fresh input on our Schmidt trigger. We'll use a larger capacitor here so that our oscillator operates at a lower frequency. You can experiment with different size capacitors. Here we're adding in the LFO rate knob and sending it back to the output of the Schmidt trigger. Now let's jump from the positive leg of the capacitor down to a non-inverting input on a fresh op amp. Finish setting up the voltage follower by adding a small jumper from the inverting input to the output of the op amp. This is going to buffer our signal and send a triangle wave out to a pair of LEDs that are wired up in parallel. an 8K resistor here to tame the LEDs, and then sending it to ground. Our 
our lights are pulsating, but they're not having much of an effect on the light-dependent resistor because it's not right up against it and there's too much extraneous light. Or maybe I didn't have the switch in the right position. I don't know, man. So let's make the Vactrol by wrapping these up in electrical tape. You should definitely use heat shrink though. I didn't have any, so I should use the next best thing. I'll make another one with heat shrink before I solder it to a board. I'll place one of the LEDs right back where it came from and the LDR right back where it came from. And voila, we've now got a Vactrol-based LFO for our low-pass filter.